In this video, I'm gonna demo how you can breathe new life into old blog posts. So it's not uncommon that a website might have several blog posts that have been created over the course of several years. You might be a business owner that has learned a little bit more about SEO and you wanna clean some of those blog posts up, or maybe you're a marketing employee or a marketing consultant that has come in and is now cleaning up some of the blog posts that somebody else produced and perhaps they didn't know what they were doing. So in this video, you can follow along with me as I go step-by-step through how you can give some SEO value value to some of these existing posts and actually really give a boost to your site. But before we get into it, I want to mention some free resources that I put together for you in my SEO basics kit. Things that include a keyword research planner, the content planner that I'm going to show you today, and a bunch of other things that will help you on your SEO journey. And you can find that at mysiteranked.com forward slash kit. So what we have here is about 16 blog posts that were already existing on a law firm's website. And my goal here today is I've organized them into uh, my spreadsheet here. And what I'm gonna do over the next few minutes is show you how I'm going to re-optimize all of these posts. First, we're gonna choose uh, a focus keyword for each of them because most of these posts don't really have any real SEO or great SEO that's been done to them. So we're gonna start from ground zero by just choosing a focus keyword for each post. Then we're gonna uh, rewrite the titles, we're gonna rewrite the URLs, and then we're gonna come up with some new uh, title tags and actually anchor text for where we're gonna link these blog posts to. So I've started by simply just categorizing these because how you wanna think about your blog posts is you wanna decide two things. One, do you even need these existing blog posts? Because in many cases, you might have blog posts that are years old, and so it might just make sense to get rid of those blogs. Number two is that the ones that you keep, you wanna categorize them, meaning what we want these blog posts to essentially do is reinvigorate our kind of core pages on our website. So if you're a service-based business, you want these blog posts most likely linking to their relative service that they're they're talking about. If you're a product-based business, same thing. You want these blog posts to link back to their appropriate products that they're talking about. And if you're just a, a content website, then you would want your blogs to be organized around a central theme and essentially linking to the like core theme that they're talking about. So my goal today is I've taken this law firm's uh, 16 posts and I've kind of categorized them into four categories. There's essentially five, but really it's four. And the four categories are family law, estate planning, business law, and criminal defense. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna determine which ones I don't need. And I already know off the bat that there's these ones related to you know COVID-19 that aren't gonna be relative anymore. Um, and so I'm just gonna remove those. And so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is choose a focus keyword for each one of these blog posts. The reason we wanna do that is because we wanna have something that we're optimizing this post for. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you generally don't wanna use the same focus keyword for multiple pages or posts. So we don't want our focus keyword to be any of like the big the key, big keywords we're going after. So like for example, criminal law is something this law firm does. Well, we're not gonna optimize a blog post for criminal law lawyer or criminal law because that's actually what we're optimizing their, their page for criminal law on their site for, which I'll show you in a little bit how we're gonna you know kind of use these blogs and point back to that one. But usually with your blogs, you're not gonna run into that mm, too often, I'll show you here. Um, so let's just start with the first post and uh, it's about uh, non-parent custody. So the first thing I like to do is honestly, I just start typing that into Google. And I use the Chrome extension called Keywords Everywhere. It'll cost you $10 and it pulls up all this data on the side. Now some of these keywords are probably gonna be 
relatively low volume keywords like non-parent custody, but we'll try our best to find some something that actually gets searched. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna select non-parent custody. I'm just gonna see what type of volume that gets. Okay, gets 140 searches. So we're sort of onto something. The other thing that you need to know from your perspective is that this is a local business, meaning they are only trying to serve clients in North Dakota. So all the content needs to be kind of inclusive and, and kind of leaning towards the North, North Dakota and its keywords. So what that means is if I choose something like non-parent custody, I'm most likely going to put North Dakota after it or ND because, and this is something that you should note, if you're trying to rank locally, it doesn't really make sense for you to just put, have your keyword be like non-parent custody because you're going to, if you're optimizing for that kind of broader keyword, your post could show up really broad, which isn't always a bad thing. There's strategy in that as well. But for our purposes, we're really trying to rank locally. So all of our keywords, we're going to throw most likely like a North Dakota or an ND after it. So back to just kind of my keyword process. So you really kind of want to first look at the post, kind of get the gist of it. And so this post is about what the laws are surrounding custody when let's say the parent is out of the picture and you're a relative, you're a foster parent, something like that. So non-parent custody, all right, seems like a pretty good one. The other thing I'm gonna recommend is uh, Google's Keyword Planner, which uh, you can find in, it's under the Google Ads platform. You'll just come over here to Tools, Keyword Planner, and you can watch some of my other videos on uh, keyword research. I'm not going to get too far into it, but I've got a couple other videos just on keyword research that will walk you through this process. So if I use Google Ads Keyword Planner, I kind of start with a general keyword and usually, you know, it's better if you can start with like three. I'm not even sure I have like another version of this non-parent custody. Let's put custody act, non-parent custody act because that was uh, what the original post was about. Let's see what that generates for us. And usually what'll happen is you'll start getting some uh, relative suggestions from Google. And I like to just search by average uh, monthly volume. So average monthly searches, you just kind of sort here. And then you wanna make sure that it's relevant. So, you know, non-custody parent gets a lot of searches, but that's pretty broad. I don't know that we'd want that as our focus keyword, but this is really where you have to, one, get into the mind of the searcher. What is the searcher thinking when they're typing this? Um, and I'm not sure that they would necessarily be looking for our article if they searched this, because it seems like this could lead them down a few other paths. So I think in this case, we're gonna do something like non-parent custody, and we'll either put North Dakota or ND. And so that's a little insight and I'm just gonna go down my list here and kind of do eat the same for each one of these. Okay, so I've completed choosing all of my focus keywords and I'll go through a few of them for you to just give you some insight into how I've selected these. Let's start with the blog post that was titled Gestational Carrier Agreements, North Dakota. So after doing some research, you know, the technical term in North Dakota is gestational carrier, but most people, when they think of what this is, it's surrogacy. And so gestational surrogacy actually is still a uh, proper word, but I went with gestational surrogacy agreements, North Dakota. Now these are pretty, you know, long tail keywords, but because these blog posts are really specific to certain law elements, it makes sense. This next one, is about removing a personal representative. A personal representative is just somebody that handles the estate uh, after someone dies, but most people call it an executor. And so that term executor gets searched. Well, let's just look, executor, executor. So executor gets searched, you know, 60,000 times versus, uh, what was the other? personal representative. to like personal representative 2,900 times. Let's put personal representative of a state just 1,000 times. So since they're essentially the same thing, 
uh, or they are the same thing, I should say, just North Dakota calls them personal representatives, but I'm thinking about the searcher, right? What's the searcher gonna type into the search engine? And it's probably gonna be something like executor. So, removing executor of a state ND. In this case, if you're, if you're adding a state, you can choose to add that state as North Dakota or ND, it really doesn't matter. I try to keep you know my keywords a little bit shorter. And the same goes with you know my URLs. So because this one was getting a, long, a little long, I shortened it to ND. But I'd say in general, you can do uh, either or. Google's a smart search engine, it can figure it out. So the next two were pretty basic. Here's one that was really interesting. So the blog post is, how do you know if a worker is an independent contractor or employee? Nobody is searching that uh, long of a phrase. At least there wasn't any keyword data. But what they do search is contractor versus employee. This gets quite a few searches. So, you know, 5,400 searches. Next, again, this one was interesting too. The blog post is how uh, can I pay my employees hourly and not pay them overtime. These searches a lot of times were like non-exempt salaried employees that get searched a lot, like non-exempt employee. But I really wanted to reflect the spirit of this article and it's really about both. Know when an employer can kind of know when it needs to pay its salaried and hourly employees. Um, and more so the hourly employees, which actually doesn't get searched a lot. But what I did find is this question, who is exempt from overtime pay? And so this gets you know 720 searches a month. So what I'm gonna do that seemed most relevant, I'm just gonna put North Dakota after it. And I'll just finally finish on this one. This was a post about marijuana uh, penalties in North Dakota. And the title's a little misleading. It's like distribution of marijuana is still a serious crime. But the post actually talks about, it's almost a little like tongue in cheek. It, it shows 16 different examples of, of crimes in North Dakota that are equivalent to marijuana. So it's actually trying to paint a picture that, did you know if you get caught with marijuana in North Dakota, it's the same penalty as I forget what some of the examples were, but it was like some really harsh stuff. Like you're, you're up there with like serious crimes. What I decided to make this keyword, marijuana penalties, North Dakota. This is pretty broad, this keyword, compared to the article, but I know we're probably not gonna create a lot of other blog posts ar around, you know, marijuana penalties or, or, you know, marijuana crimes. But even if we do, we can use different keywords like marijuana laws in North Dakota, marijuana offenses. I know, I, I just can guess that we're never gonna create a post that's gonna use marijuana penalties again. And if we do, we can always change this, right? So that was one. And so I bring that up because now I'm gonna show you the titles I came up with. Because so I've got my keywords here. Now I've changed all my titles. With your title, you wanna include that focus keyword primarily, but then you also wanna think about the reader as well. So you can just go down the list here and see some of my examples. Let's start with the marijuana one. So I felt that this marijuana title was not appropriate. It just didn't tell the true story of the article. So instead I changed it to marijuana is still as serious as these 16 crimes in ND. Boom. We did include penalties, but we've got, you know, marijuana, North Dakota. Usually I would say include the focus keyword in your title. But in this case, I, I'm going to deviate from that, which you can do uh, in this process. Okay, who is exempt from overtime pay in North Dakota? We just literally are using it, that as the blog post. That one is good to go. This one, same thing, difference between employee and contractor and ND. And then these are all pretty basic. They make sense, you know, removing an executor. This one says, we act, I actually kept it, removing a personal representative of a state in North Dakota because technically, you know, in North Dakota, they're called personal representatives. So I don't wanna to be too misleading. We can have this kind of as our focus keyword that we're gonna optimize our URL for and maybe a few other places like in our title tag and things. But um, you know, the name of the article, I'm gonna use personal representative. So I think the rest are pretty basic. You know, I, here I added surrogacy instead of carrier. Uh, estate tax and lifetime uh, gifting explained. This one was tips to heirs. Five must know estate tips for heirs. So you can see they're sort of 
some conversion value there too. Make the title keyword rich, but also something people wanna read. And then I, I'm kind of jumping around here, but lastly, this one about different ways to get a TY. This one was kind of like the marijuana one. It was almost like kind of a funny um, article. And it just shows a bunch of different random, like strange ways you can get a DUI in North Dakota, like riding a horse. So this one, I'm just gonna say eight various ways to get a DUI in North Dakota. So the next thing I need to work on is taking my focus keywords and selecting new URLs. So most small businesses and website owners, when they're producing blog posts, they just kind of let WordPress or whatever editor they're using for their website kind of post the URL for them. You probably maybe have never even put any thought to this because if you just, in most website editors, if you just start typing your title, it makes your title the URL. So you might have some URLs that are extremely long, some that are extremely short, but you actually wanna put thought into this. So what we want is to have our URLs be somewhere between three and five words, or you know, if possible, but oftentimes it really isn't with the blog post to be under three words. But I try to get my blog post to about three to five words, but I want these to be somewhat consistent. And more so, I wanna make sure my focus keyword is included. Okay, I've completed writing my new URL structures, which you'll see here. We'll just go down a few of them, starting with, we'll start with the first one, non-parent custody, custody in North Dakota. So our keyword was non-parent custody North Dakota. What I went with was non-parent custody ND, or in ND, probably remove the in. Yeah, I could probably remove that. So the rest are pretty basic. Uh, Co-parenting in North Dakota, we didn't even talk about that blog post, but that one's pretty standard. Here's one that I, I kind of struggled with. So the blog post is about four things to consider before becoming a stay-at-home mom. The original URL was quite long. The keyword we're actually aiming for is long tail is also it's what to consider when becoming a stay-at-home mom. So I'm just going with becoming stay-at-home mom. Another thing you can do here is just like search that keyword and see, you know, what some of your the top competitors are doing what to consider, so let's see, the top post, 10 things to consider, let's see how long their URL is. Stay at home mom plan, ooh, I like it. You don't always wanna be exactly identical to like what's ranking really well because they're already using it, you copying them is not going to differentiate you at all, so I always try to be like slightly more clever, but if you're just strictly out of options, it's better, better to join them than to not, so can't beat them, beat them, join them, right? A lot of times you can see, I just literally use the focus keyword as the URL. That's really most of the time what you can hope to achieve. And let's talk about this one. So remember, executor is what I'm, I'm optimizing for because I think more people are gonna search executor. So that's where maybe your focus keyword isn't always what you wanna show as like your blog title or, or smack dab on your page because maybe what somebody's searching for isn't what it's um, normally called. And then that's the case here. So in North Dakota, again, they, they're more commonly called a personal representative. So that's what I want as the title because I wanna be accurate here. But because I know more people are probably gonna search executor, I can kind of hide that in my keyword or excuse me, in my URL. So that's what I've done here. Not many people really see the URL. The only entity that does is Google. And so we're optimizing for Google, so let's do it. So that's the URLs, and these are important because it's really about a third of the battle. You've got your title, your URL, and then next we're gonna talk about title tag. Okay, so I've taken some time and I have rewritten my title tags. Now. Most of the time, again, if you're using WordPress or a website editor like Wix, your blog title is often going to just automatically become your title tag if you do nothing. If you don't go into your Yoast settings in WordPress or if you don't go into your SEO title in the other website editors, what Google is gonna pull for your title tag is just gonna be the blog post title, which is, in most cases, is fine. But I recommend taking some time and actually getting a little creative here because your title tag is what shows up here. And so I like to, one, include my focus keyword, 
first and foremost, but two, write it in a way that it would get clicked on. You know as well as I do that you click on titles that catch your attention. So, you know, you've gotta be thinking about that conversion side of things and, and getting people to take action. So that's what I tried to do here with most of these. Non-parent custody and visitation of child in North Dakota. So you remember my keyword was just non-parent custody in North Dakota. But the article really talks about you know, custody visitation and I wanted to get the word child in there. So we've got a roughly 55 to 60 characters that we can you know, write these. So if you can, add more words and it makes sense, go ahead and do that. So this stay at home mom one, I basically just used the exact keyword that we're optimizing for. Now, normally with this one, I would actually wanna get a little bit more clever and do something like five things. And the article actually talks about four things. I thought I might actually have a hard time uh, uh, ranking for like four things to consider because there's so many other blogs that are already using that. Seven things to consider things to consider, things to consider, five things to consider. So I'm like, uh, there's already like 10 blogs related to things you should consider, but there are no blogs really about what to consider. So I'm kind of like, eh, this one's gonna be a little tough, but that's kind of my thought process is let's be a little bit different. Here's the air tips for heirs, five must know estate tips for heirs. Again, it doesn't have to always be, you know, 50 to 60 characters. If it makes sense, go ahead, but you're gonna notice that sometimes not all the blog posts are gonna be you know, taking full advantage. Like this one, this one looks a little shorter. So what I recommend is kind of seeing what the competition is doing. Here's one, the keyword was removing executor of estate ND. I just went ahead and changed that, how to remove an executor because typically on blog posts, the things that get clicked more are you know, how to, numbers, things that are, you know, a question, uh, get clicked a lot, a list, you know, list questions, but just removing an executor from the estate. Eh, I mean, it is a verb. So, but I figured a how to would be a little bit more attractive to click on. Here's one about the probate process. Again, keyword was just probate process, North Dakota. So instead we changed it to the probate process in North Dakota, what to know. So when you have extra space, you can add you know, little things like this, like to get somebody to actually click on it. Here's that one about contractor versus employee. So we're using that keyword. Uh, the keyword was contractor versus employee ND. So we got the ND over here and it's contractor versus employee, what's the difference in ND? And then going down, here are the ones that were a little bit more funny. And so these were a little bit more, you know, I had to get more creative, but here's one. 16 crimes just as bad as marijuana distribution in the ND. That sums it up, what that article is about. And I think I would probably click on this. And then here is this one, ways to get a DUI in ND, avoid these eight things. I could have done something like eight strange ways to get DUIs or eight, but actually they weren't that strange. It's like riding a lawnmower, riding a bike, riding a horse, mm, not super crazy. If you're, if you're using common sense, you shouldn't do those things. So. So that's why I was thinking something like avoid these eight things. So next, let's talk about anchor text. Anchor text is this thing here. It's the words that actually are the linkable hyperlink. That is the anchor text. And so this clicks to uh, some other article on their site about 10 ways to stay active as a stay-at-home mom. So it's a relative article. That's what we wanna do here with our our links. Part of the reason I've categorized these into each of their categories is so that we can organize this a little better. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna find anchor text and try to link that anchor text in our article back to the family law page in this case, red is family law. So we're gonna try to link all of these four articles back to family law, all of these five articles back to uh, estate and probate planning. And then this is uh, business law and this is criminal. So I'll show you in just a sec how we achieve this. What I've done is I've gone through each one of these articles and I've found relative text in the actual blog article that is relative to family law in, in this case for these first four. You can do this one of two ways. You can kind of predetermine what you want your anchor text to be and like 
try to stuff it into the article. But in this case, I just went and I looked and I just did like a control F to find anything related to family. And these were words that were already used in the article. So now I'm just gonna make those link to my family law attorney page, which is the parent page. It's, it's the main page that talks about family law on this website. The trick here is you want your anchor text, you want it to be something that's relative to this, to this page you're linking to. The other thing is you don't really want it to be the brand name because you're, you really want the brand name to be identified with the homepage. Now, the only different one that you'll see here, and I, I've left this out just to keep the attorney and the client uh, anonymous here, but the uh, actual attorney's name was mentioned. And so because in this article, family law wasn't wasn't really mentioned, what I instead, I'm going to link where, where it has the attorney's name. I'm going to make that a link and I'm going to link to the attorney's page on the website. So that's that's doable too. Totally appropriate because what that's going to do now is it's any it's going to associate the attorney's name with its page and we're driving uh, SEO and link juice to that page. So the next examples are our estate law and probate law or probate litigation. So I went through the articles and I found uh, words in the article that related to estate or estate planning or probate, probate litigation. These are all great. And what am I gonna do? Where it says estate plan here, that's gonna be a clickable link to our, our main page about that service that they offer, probate litigation, boom. What this does for Google is it tells Google, hey, this page here about estate and probate lawyer is relative to these keywords, estate plan, probate litigation, estate, estate planning, probate. So now when people search things like estate plan, probate litigation, estate planning, and, and things like that, this page is more likely to rank because we've driven a bunch of relative links internally to it. That's what I wanna get across to you. Uh, so this one, we're not using it. Remember 11 is a post we're getting rid of. Uh, this this one was kinda easy. Both articles mentioned business lawyers. And so we're gonna make that our link and it's just gonna go to our page that's about civil and business law. In blue are our articles about criminal law. And so we're gonna link to our criminal attorney page. And so in the marijuana article, it, there was the word criminal charge and so uh, it's a little more broad, and so we're gonna link that to that page. This one said DUI charge, and so we're gonna link that to our criminal page. So basically, Google's gonna cued in on, anytime somebody searches things like criminal charges or DUI charges, they're gonna wanna show this criminal page a little more often. Oh, and I forgot, this one actually could be in blue because this is another COVID-19 article. Normally, I would say, ah, well, maybe we get rid of it, but it actually is kind of a, interesting article about speedy trials during COVID-19. I th still think it's somewhat relative. And here's the thing to note. It doesn't mean you have to get rid of every single old blog post if it just isn't relevant. You can keep them. <laughs> Make sure you're doing this part, linking to relative pages. That's the main reason I'm keeping this page is so that I can link to cr the criminal attorney page using this anchor text. That's really the power of this. This page, eh, doesn't really have any value anymore from a content standpoint because it's outdated now or soon will be but that link to this criminal attorney page still remains really valuable. So hopefully that explains everything relatively easily. A couple things to keep in mind. I plan to throw this, this example here into my tools in my SEO kit, which you can get at mysiterank.com forward slash kit. If you got value out of this video, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button. And when you see that bell pop up, click that too, and you'll get notified every time I post a new video. We'll see you in the next one.